What's up, everybody on YouTube? Spike Man Dan. Finally got it all together. is so responsive. What's up, YouTube? Spike Man Dan. Alright, so we got a little dilemma. It was awesome. Don't get me wrong. Oh my god, she is so fast. I'm like, oh. oh my god. This thing is ridiculously freaking awesomely fast, right? Like, it's wanting to do damn wheelies as I'm trying to freaking go down the street. But we had an issue. And I'll show you what's going on and I'll explain why. All right, so I've got the engine torn completely back apart yet again, right after the first test ride, and something just terrible happened. Um, let me see if I can find it. All right, not sure how many of y'all can see this, but we're gonna. I'm gonna try my best to do so and show you. There we go. All right. Stop connecting piston rod. Do we have focus? All right, yeah. There is like super hardcore. Hold on. All right, much better focus. So what happened is the piston, somehow the connecting rods were not nearly torqued down to specs. I, I torqued them down, but I must have, I don't know what the heck happened, but uh, I had them torqued down to spec. When I tore the engine, I had the engine tore apart. I had to put all the stage three stuff in it, right? So I put the, the stock connecting rod back on it for the, uh, the three hour wear and tear. Well, it definitely fucking tore itself apart, that's for sure. I mean, look at that fucking wear. Oh my God. Right here is where it was brand new on both those little edges right there. And it just, I saw so much aluminum shaving come out of the oil of that thing. It was ridiculous. But the good news is I didn't blow the entire engine apart like I did on the uh, last one. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what is going on here with the, uh, the last engine that I had. got the gas tank just chilling out here but yeah if i show you guys this one look at that you still got all that metal fucking crap from when it blew itself apart and this was the uh the head that i accidentally cracked i'm saving this because i want to practice porting and polishing on a busted head so i know what i'm doing get a little feel for it but look at this oh my god status This engine just KO'd itself, like, no joke. The cylinder walls, oh my god, that's where the, uh, right here is where the piston rod, like, after the piston shattered itself, it's where it busted up against the frickin' sidewalls of there and just shattered this. Oh my lord. Hey, look at that. There's some y'all probably didn't know is these pistons or these engines come sleeve. That's a steel sleeve right there, it looks like. 
and it's just encased in aluminum. Huh. Apparently you can get away with some good boring on these engines, like got a nice little steel sleeve to work with there. And that's another reason I saved these engine cases, like, you know, it's money and aluminum, what if I need another bearing, I can press that back out. I always save spare parts. I have, uh, I have all these freaking spare parts for days. And like I said, uh, this head's busted because of that crack right there. And I've already hammered out the uh, steel sleeves on that. So it was good and ready for recycling. But then I figured out that's a good practice head to learn how to port and polish with. A stupid fucking door. So yeah, that's uh, what happened to the last engine. It just devastated. But at least that didn't happen to this one. This one I can still fix. I've even got a. Uh, I even kept the uh, bottom crankcase from the uh, the last one that blew up. And according to. I'm not exactly digging those grooves that this engine just wore itself into the uh, journal with. I mean, I felt it. It's still smooth. I can kind of. I don't. I don't think that's a good thing at all. If I can actually feel the ridges, even though they're smooth, I'm not really wanting to risk a brand new uh, ARC piston rod and new rod bearings on wearing on that. But then again. Yeah, I would just be smarter to just put the other crank. It's the exact same engine, so, you know, it'd just be the right way to do it. So that's what I'm going to do. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. Stick around for part two of reassembly and possibly even a GoPro of me. I already rode the hell out of this fucking engine. And I actually, well, I guess I can't really say I rode the hell out of it, but... I did take it around the block a few times, and holy hell, it is torquey as a motherfucker. It wants to make this thing do wheelies. I have to lean forward just like, there's no wheelie bar on it. I'm not going to attempt to try to wheelie a freaking mini bike yet, but uh, well, maybe one day I'll get there. Yeah, this it's, it's a hell of an engine. I swear to fucking God, especially with the, uh, the dyno cam. And the uh, Makuni style carburetor and the 26 pound valve springs and the chrome ollie push rods. Oh my Jesus Lord, this thing screams. It just gets up and goes. Hills don't even phase it, it just powers up the hills like nothing. It's nothing at all like this little stock three horse that I pulled out of it. It's a, it's just a really wimpy engine for like the beginning avid, like, you know, not even avid, just straight out beginner. But these things. The Predator 212, all stage 3 out. oh my lord, they definitely command respect. If you're a first time rider and you got a stage 3 engine like this on your bike, you better look out because it's going to throw your ass off. My buddy Smiley was riding it, he wrecked for the first time on my bike because he did not respect or understand the power of this damn engine. But because it wasn't his fault that the engine got destroyed, it was actually the fault of the engine itself. You're not really able to run the uh, stock connecting rod uh, anywhere at those kind of RPMs without it some kind of how destroying itself. So, like I said, from the last engine, still got the uh, ARC billet of aluminum rod, but this one bent itself on destroying the engine, so that one's junk. I don't know if they have any sort of warranty or anything anybody could tell me about. Uh, whether if I could send that back or not, but here's the uh, chrome ollie push rods. I'm using the uh, 5.200s because those are actually the exact same length as the stock ones. I just wanted something stronger and heavier. And I do have a reason and feeling that the uh, the last time I ran chrome ollie push rods in the last engine is I was running the 5.260s not the 200s. These are the 200s that I just ran in the engine. And the engine did not blow up. The last one I blew up, I was running the 5.260s and guess what happened? 
Yeah. The, uh, I, I revved up the engine, I climbed up the RPMs, and it had some sort of issue with the uh, piston smacking the exhaust valve, probably because they were not the right length or measurements for that engine. And, uh, yeah, you can basically figure out what happened there is uh, the exhaust valve smacked the piston, shattered the piston, and it caused the whole entire engine to just destroy itself. So that's not good. And we want to make sure that we always order the right size push rods, not the wrong size. No, you, if you go any longer, you're going to have to get like a smaller cam or something. I don't know how the hell they do those like measurements, but I just figured as long as I got the stock size, the engine did not blow itself up. I just had an issue with the freaking piston rod. So I'm working on that. Uh, yeah. Uh, I might have more to come. Uh, stick around. We're going to get this engine fixed up and rebuild and put back in. And maybe we'll get a GoPro of me actually hauling ass down the street on this thing. But it's not going to be anything too crazy like you see on the drag strip where they're just going all out. I actually uh, do want to break this engine in proper style. So stick around for that. Spike Man Dan is out. Please don't forget to hit give that big thumbs up. And like and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget, people, we do have new stickers. I'd be more than happy to give you guys. I've got a big, giant, fat stack of them. So, you know, I've got enough to keep you all satisfied and going. And, yeah, it's a wicked design. Absolutely sick. I, I design them myself. I just send my design to a company and they print them out. So, big thanks to uh, you printing on that one. Thank you, guys. And, uh, yeah, we're going to... I got a lot of work ahead of me, and I got one more day off, so let's see what I can do. Spike Man, hope you enjoyed this channel. All right, everybody, just like you wanted, test ride number one of the Stage 3 212. Let's fire this bitch up. See, I don't understand what it is with these cams and that throttle. You just tap it once and it just wants to die. And we also got our speedometer, so I'm still breaking it in. So I'm not gonna get too crazy, but we're gonna see what it does acceleration-wise. See, like I said, you gotta, it's not that it's not warmed up, it is. It's just that throttle is, with a cam in it, it's touchy.
fucking kidding me? 50 fucking three. Oh my God, I got a 50 mile an hour fucking mini bike. That was a choke. Well, there you have it, folks. Read it and wait. 53 miles an hour. Holy shit. That's fucking mad whack fast. Especially for this thing. Oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god. Lord Jesus. Alright, I better start seeing some more subscribers for that. I don't give a fuck. That is fucking amazing. 53 miles an hour, look at that max speed. I'm sure it goes faster. And we only traveled 1.5 miles. Uh, March 22nd, 6.38. Damn, this thing keeps track of like time, seconds, everything. I'm pretty impressed. Spike Man Dan, go ahead and hit that big like button. If uh, you know, stay tuned. If you want to stay tuned, get that uh, subscribe button. I got more work to do. God damn, that is fast.